Hey guys! People tend to believe that in the long years of studying our planet, we've learned a lot about it, if not everything. We've learned to create and drain the seas, reverse rivers, and even fly into space. But there are still many unexplored places on our planet that no one can explain. There's the small Oak Island off the coast of Nova Scotia in eastern Canada. People have been trying to uncover its secret for over 200 years, but to no avail. There's a treasure hidden there, which everyone knows about, but no one can get. According to the most widespread theory, it all began in 1795 when three curious boys wanted to play pirates and thus went on a journey to the southeastern end of the island, where they found an old oak tree there. It had a ship block hanging from one of the branches, as well as a piece of half-rotten rope and a piece of fishing tackle. Right under the oak tree, the curious teenagers discovered an entrance to a mine which was almost completely covered with earth. According to another version, it all started with two old sailors, John McGinnis and Robert Lethbridge, who were rumored to have retired from one ship. John McGinnis was breeding pigs and growing vegetables, lived as a hermit, stubbornly refusing to leave the island, even though his son and daughter-in-law constantly invited him to their place. The old man felt particular trust towards his eight-year-old grandson, Daniel. According to Daniel's recollections, after drinking some Jamaican rum, John once told him that when he dies, his grandson will become the richest man in Nova Scotia. John McGinnis appears to have drowned while fishing in 1805, and his grandson inherited his hut almost entirely. One day, young Daniel was playing pirates and discovered his grandfather's chest with several old maps, which had the island marked on them and covered with incomprehensible symbols and encrypted inscriptions. Unable to decipher the symbols, Daniel turned for help to Robert Lethbridge, who lived nearby. He seemed to have shown interest in the find and promised to help, but that night the hut caught fire and Lethbridge died. All of McGinnis's records, which the children unfortunately didn't think to make copies of in advance, were also lost in the fire. Digging through the ashes, the boys allegedly found the entrance to the mine under the stone slabs that covered the floor. The guys managed to get into the pit. The walls of the mine had some incomprehensible signs on them. The young treasure hunters immediately began to deepen the hole, but at a depth of about three meters, they found an overlap made of thick oak logs. They managed to break through the overlap, but there was no treasure under it, and the mine went deeper to an unknown depth. They didn't go any further. The boy's parents didn't show any interest in treasure hunting. The last treasure island, Oak Island, had a bad reputation among the locals, so the children's stories didn't really motivate adults to investigate any further. Years have passed, and Daniel McGinnis and his friends returned to excavation in adulthood. In 1813, in collaboration with Joe Sellers, a retired British Navy captain, Daniel McGinnis, Anthony Vaughn, and John Smith went down into the money pit to a depth of about 28 meters, passing through overlaps of charcoal, coconut fiber, and dense clay. Under one of the overlaps that was made of a ship's putty, there was another stone with an encrypted inscription. This stone disappeared in 1912, but a copy was made of it in advance. The inscription was supposedly deciphered later. It said, 40 feet below, two million pounds are buried. There's also a different version of the story in which the first stone provided by the Lethbridge widow said in Latin, look for the entrance to the mine in the north, northwest from the main landmark. And the second one found in the mine said, gold is lowered to a depth of 160 plus 180 feet from here. However, it was impossible to prove anything since the inscriptions were too short. Meanwhile, the work continued. The four treasure hunters weren't concerned with decoding the inscription at the moment, but were rather in a hurry to dig so as to find the treasure that was literally under their feet. They had to face new difficulties. Water had penetrated the mine. On the day the steel probe was about to detect something small and solid at a depth of about 30 meters, the mine got almost completely filled with seawater that had appeared as if from nowhere. 
After painstaking research, it turned out that the money pit was just a part of a giant hydraulic complex. It had at least several drainage tunnels connected to it from the side of the Smuggler's Bay at the northern end of the island, which constantly filled the lower levels with seawater, thus preventing access to its contents. Several more years have passed in the attempts to close off the tunnels and finally, on August 23, 1813, according to the miraculously preserved diary of Joe Sellers, an oak barrel was brought to the surface. Any trace of the treasure hunters has been lost after that. There were no official announcements about any discoveries and any further fate of the main characters of this story is unknown. The only exception is Anthony Vaughan, who was traced to London in Great Britain. He was known to own huge estates in Canada and England, and his son, Samuel, was known to have bought jewelry worth about 50,000 pounds for his wife at one of the auctions, worth about $200,000 when recalculated at current prices. This is how real stories and legends created the reputation of a small island. The secretive pit got called money, but the search works haven't been resumed until 45 years later. During excavations in 1849 to 1850, it was discovered that the mine was connected to the seas through two artificial channels. The interest in the excavations was also fueled by the finds. At the same stone, a piece of parchment paper with Latin letters, iron scissors, and fragments of a gold chain. Treasure hunters managed to find investors and get the latest equipment at the time, pumps, dredgers, drilling mechanisms. It was all in vain. The pit was designed in such a way that any attempts to penetrate it caused it to sink, or it could have been the early treasure hunters who had ruined the drainage system. Be that as it may, no one has managed to get rid of the water in the mine since then. Seven expeditions came to the island from 1909 to 1960. Since then, works have been done on the island almost continuously. The island's land has been sold and resold several times already. In 1969, half of the island was acquired by the Triton Company, owned by the famous treasure hunters Daniel Blankenship and David Tobias. In the 20th century, carbon dating of logs and mine masonry helped establish that the main underground construction work was carried out no later than in 1660 to 1700. The 40-meter deep shaft with a diameter of 3.65 meters led into the now flooded underground storage. Blankenship began his investigation by working in the archives. He also developed the main theories about the origins of all the structures on the island. Daniel was in no hurry to start drilling, and when he did start, the location he chose was 200 feet away from the money pit. He discovered a large hollow chamber behind the rock and even saw what looked like a huge box, a pickaxe, and a human hand floating past the camera that was lowered into the pit. This meant that according to the pirate traditions, the Oak Island treasure was guarded by at least one dead person. Blankenship himself went down a pipe with a diameter of 70 centimeters to a depth of 55 meters to see what was in the underwater chamber. But the island wasn't ready to reveal its secrets yet. It's believed that Daniel Blankenship still lives on the island, but his mind has been slightly clouded by the inability to solve the mystery. By the way, the treasure hunter came to the conclusion that this kind of complex structure wasn't built by pirates. In 2005, the Michigan group of American industrialists working in the deep drilling sector became co-owners of the island. Maybe this company specialist will be able to finally unravel the mystery of the underground structures of this island. Oak Island bankrupted several generations of treasure hunters and took six lives of those who tried to get the treasure. The idea of turning it into a tourist attraction to make money off of it this way at least wasn't appreciated by the owners of the island who regularly renew their licenses to perform exploration work. So what's actually hiding in the mine? There are a couple of main theories. The first theory is the simplest and most common, pirate's treasure. There are two candidates here, Captain Kidd or Edward Thatch, also known as Blackbeard. The small bay on the island isn't called Smuggler's Bay for nothing, but could it really be that the impulsive and prolific pirates spent so much time and effort to build this kind of complex underground storage facility for their treasures? 
The second theory speaks to the Inca treasures brought to the north of the continent during the brutal conquest of the Inca Empire by the warriors of Francisco Pizarro in the early 16th century. Historical chronicles claim that the treasures plundered by the conquistadors constituted only a small fraction of the entire wealth of the Inca Empire. So where did the main part go? Could it be hidden on a small island on the east coast of Canada? According to the third theory, the treasures were hidden on the island by English monks from the Abbey of St. Andrew, which was dissolved by the English Parliament in 1560. The monks have been hoarding their wealth for over a thousand years and hiding it in underground galleries just like those found on the island. Their riches were never found in England. Perhaps the monks could have brought them across the ocean? According to the fourth theory, it had something to do with the Masons. The strange and intricate structures of the mines and tunnels may have been built by the Templars, for whom the island could have served as a secret base during difficult times for the Order. This theory also features the mystery of the Holy Grail, for which the Oak Island Money Pit would be an ideal hiding place. According to the fifth theory, the valuables of the French Royal House of Bourbons were hidden on the island in the early years of the bloody French Revolution of 1789. This legend is linked to the fact that the steward of Queen Marie Antoinette took refuge in Canada. The sixth theory, which is far from the last one, believes that building such intricate technical structures underground just to hide several treasure chests is a waste of time. So it might not be about the treasures at all. But who could have made these mines and wells and what for? Visitors from other worlds? Lost civilizations? Who will unravel the mystery of the tiny island? So friends, write your own theories in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.